flow. What do you think of when I say that? What comes to mind? I think being in the zone. If you're a composer, maybe it's when the music writes itself. An artist, I feel like it's not my hand in control of the brush. What we're describing is when we accomplish the impossible while being in a state of mind that allows us, we feel, to exceed our normal potential. And we all want to feel that and experience it. Tap into the flow. I want to harness the flow. But what I just described, this sound like out-of-body experiences. In our lives, every day we search for this. And people describe it sometimes as being swept up and carried away with no idea of where it's going to go or how they're going to get there. That doesn't really sound like something we can just harness and tap into and then use anywhere we want to in life. When I think about my life, and maybe a time I've felt this, one day comes to mind, October 21st, 2013, six years, four days ago. You may wonder, how do I remember such a specific date? Let's try that again. I said, you may wonder and ask. <laughs> I remember that day because that was the day my life changed. And I don't mean I woke up with some new aches and pains and how am I going to deal with this change? I'm talking a total course correction. I was driving along to work. It was a Monday morning. I was on the interstate. And I thought, I could drive into one of these bridge abutments and end my life. I was terrified. I was terrified. I did not want to die. I knew that. But I had this realization that I didn't know how to live. And I got to work, and this is swirling around in my mind, and I sit down at my desk, and I don't know what happens that day. In fact, I don't know what happens the next day either. Those days are gone. The third day, that day I remember really, really well. 23rd, it was a Wednesday. Got into work, got to my desk, sat down, and I had this out-of-body experience. I washed as my hands, went to the keyboard. I wasn't in control. And I googled transgender therapy, Asheville, North Carolina. I didn't do that. The results came up. I called the first three, left a message, just asked someone to call me back. A short while later, someone did. And I told her about what had happened on Monday. But then I told her about how I'd been very depressed, up to two years at that point. And I thought my depression was because I'd been battling what I felt with my gender dysphoria. She recommended that I come in to see her soon. I guess I sounded desperate. So we set an appointment for just a couple days later, the 26th, a Saturday. And if you haven't figured it out, I have an amazing memory and I'm good with numbers. <laughs> so as Saturday approaches, I'm starting to I'm starting to get afraid. I'm scared. I can't tell her about this. You don't talk to a perfect stranger about what you're feeling inside. She's a therapist. Legally, she can't tell anyone. I can talk to her. All I need to do is talk to somebody, and then I'll be OK, because that's how therapy works, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny now, yes. So I go in, and I sit down, and we start talking about what we discussed on the phone. And she asked me about how, how do I experience this dysphoria? What does it mean for me? And I told her that I felt like it was never really my life I was living. It was a life I desperately tried to want and make mine, but it never felt like mine. I would often go to a mirror 
look at my reflection and think, I know everything about this person. I know their friends, family, favorite food, likes, dislikes. I knew them better than another person could know anyone in this world. And I felt I had never met them. I left her office and I broke down. It was as if a dam had burst inside of me and everything I'd been experiencing and holding back was starting to spill out. Life was never going to be the same for me again. I knew it. But now why? So we started meeting weekly and talking. And before long, it was pretty obvious. I, I knew I needed to transition. Mm -mm, no, that's impossible. This is impossible. Nobody can do this. And I knew that because I, this wasn't the first time I'd been here. When I was 19, I had started to transition. I didn't have any support. I didn't know how I would support myself. Maybe I'd end up homeless. A lifetime of experiences told me this wasn't tolerated or wanted in this world. I'd been bullied and harassed in school. I knew how people felt. My own mom told me that what I was feeling was wrong. It wasn't right, and it wasn't real. And it was even something that should be fixed. Images of my dad reminding me of how much physical danger there is in this world, of him holding me against the wall and choking me, telling me he was going to kill me because of what I felt on the inside. This wasn't possible. And now as an adult, if it wasn't possible when I was 19, I know it wasn't possible now. I had a job, a career. I'd be fired, unemployed, and it would only get worse from there. This wasn't possible. But then, I just, I couldn't shake this thought, this realization I had that day in the car before. I didn't know how to live. But it's, it's more than just staying alive. That's not living. What would it be like if I had a life that finally felt like mine? I had an idea of what it looked like. I'd been dreaming and thinking about it my entire life. What would it take to get me there? I'd have to surrender to this battle inside of me and embrace what I was feeling and who I knew I was. Now, a lot of these people in the front row who know me very well, this probably won't be a surprise. I decided if I was gonna transition, I probably need to make a plan for it. And I sat down and I thought of all the things that I would need to do and I decided I was gonna do this in a year. I'd make this a project. I'd build a project plan. <laughs> oh, you laugh, but you should have seen the flow charts. Gorgeous. I often look back at that, those days, and I've, I've talked with people about it, some of my friends and people in the community, and I'm just in awe of not just what I accomplished over those 11 months, but also what I felt and how I was experiencing it. How did I do it? It wasn't that it went perfectly and smoothly. I had things popped up that could have derailed me at any moment. A workplace that didn't support me. Family and friends, gone. People constantly telling me that I shouldn't do it, couldn't do it. Sometimes even in my own community, that I was doing it wrong or I was going too fast. I was determined to let no one and nothing stop me. And it wasn't that there were things that could pull me away. Many of them we all share. 
I had a job, projects, cell phone, phone calls, emails, text messages, scrolling through the internet, Netflix shows that I really wanted to watch. <laughs> Distractions. I was focused and consumed by this one thing. I would sit up at night, lose track of time sometimes, and be up the entire night reading, researching about laws, facts, anything I thought that could help me along the way. I didn't watch a lot of movies that year. I did travel, but only to conferences where I could meet other people who had done it. And I wanted to learn what worked or didn't work for them, and then how could I apply that to my own life? How did I do it? I had distractions. We all have those distractions. And I didn't do it by conquering my fears. I didn't do it by mitigating all the risks before I started. I think it's what I said earlier. It goes back to those distractions. We all have things competing for our time and energy every day in our lives. Our cell phones, news. These things are pulling and tugging at us. When you leave here today, I want you to think about your life. Think about what you have going on in it. Find the important thing. Maybe you're already working on it. Maybe you're too afraid to even start it. Quit trying to be in control. Quit trying to conquer your fears and surrender to flow. Thank you.